Why don't we start with the default setup? Just like when we learned how to edit programs, we started with the default program. Let's start with the default setup. We can see we're in setup mode, and there's no transposition. And uh, I have a similar set of controls here as I do on the play mode. I can scroll through different setups. And you'll notice that the, that the bank buttons have now shifted their, their functionality. And what they're doing, is they're showing me green or orange or red lights based on the zones that are in the setup. If we look at the default setup, there is just one zone. And let's hit edit and edit this setup so we can see what makes up a setup. This is where we map the controls and the keyboard to combine these uh, different ones in, in a setup. So uh, the, the, the basic parameter is what program are you going to play on this zone? And this is playing number one, standard. Maybe I'll choose a different program here. And I can say what channel it's going to play on. And then here you have to choose a destination, whether it's going to play out the MIDI uh, or just locally. I'm going to have it do both. And then you have uh, basic uh, program change parameters that you can store to it. And it also has a status, whether it's active or muted. If it's muted, it's not going to play. And if it's active, it will play. And if you have many uh, zones at once, you can solo them this way. So the status right now is going to be active. We're going to use it. And then it says arpeggiator. There is a, an arpeggiator for each zone, which we'll get into shortly. Uh, and it's enabled for this, for this zone. Uh, so that's on. So that's, that's the, uh, the basic thing. What, what program is going to be played on this zone? Let's go to the next page, key and vel. This is where we set the low and high key for this particular zone. So here now I have just one octave here between C3 and C4 played for the piano. Uh, and transpose, this is going to transpose the MIDI transposition of this instrument. Now everything I'm doing in setup mode is it's, it's a way of doing sound design, but really all I'm doing is telling this keyboard what to send to the sound engine. That grand piano has already been programmed as a synthesizer. And this, when you're using setups and when you're applying setups, you can actually uh, uh, do this type of sound design with any external uh, synthesizer based on what it's sounding like, because all we're doing is telling what kinds of MIDI events are going to be transmitted from the local keyboard. It's important to know that. So when I transpose, I'm just sending different MIDI notes. Note map will say, I can say it's one of two. It only play every other, every other note, two of two, like that. I can, uh, the most uh, important thing is I might want to change the velocity scaling of this. Without changing the, the, the response of the sound, I might want to make the velocity um, go from, from 0 to 127 uh, faster. So I now have made it easier. So I could do that across the board for my whole keyboard if I want to, but actually might want one zone to have a different velocity response than the next. And this is done all at the MIDI transmission level. I also have an offset. So maybe I have something really nice and I like how easy that is to get to the maximum, but I might want to turn the offset down so I actually subtract uh, this amount from all the MIDI velocity, and I might want to change the curve. You could use this to compensate for um, any kind of external devices uh, reception of, of, of velocities that you don't like, or you can do it just to adjust the various aspects of the multi -zone, of the zones in your setup. What's the first thing we really want to do is combine more than one program. That's kind of the purpose of the setups, is to combine more than one program. So why don't I add some kind of synthesizer pad. I will say that I want to have a new zone, and it's created a new zone for me. And now I see on my bank buttons I have two green lights, and that's one for each uh, zone that I have created. And if I go now, to, now I can use my Chan and Layer buttons to, to edit zone one or zone two of the two zones that I have. Let's, uh, the second one uh, is on channel two, happily. We would like to, generally speaking, keep each zone uh, mapped to a channel that, that, that matches it. You, you don't have to at all, but it makes things easier. Uh, and now I will scroll through the different kinds of things I might want to layer. So now I'm combining two sounds. Here's, um, here's one called Harpalicious. That's pretty nice. I'll maybe go to the pads here. I'll select some pads. That's nice, buzzy string pad behind the piano. 
okay? So I've added this. So I'm doing simple additive synthesis uh, combining uh, the different, the, the different uh, sounds. So if I like this, I can hit exit, and I can rename this as a uh, layered setup, L A, oops, L. We'll call this the layered setup. And I'll say yes, and it offers me the first free, and that's good. And now I have Studio Grand and Fuzzy Strings. So we've seen, I might find that that layered sound is a little bit loud, and I could do a couple of things. I could take for zone two, I could tell it velocity to be less. And now this machine will send a lower velocity to that channel than it is for the other channels. Or, alternatively, I can have this setup send a MIDI volume message. So there's a MIDI volume and panning message that will be sent whenever this, called is, whenever this setup is called. And I have this entry volume now for the pad a little lower. Nice. Okay, I like that better. Why don't we save that? Let's edit again. So that's the pan volume. Now we've looked at the channel and program. We've looked at the key and velocity. Looked at the pan and volume. Uh, let's look at the bend page briefly. There are MIDI parameters for telling a receiving device what the bend range should be. Of course, this is set per layer and per program uh, in our machine. But you can also have the setup zone change that. And so these are the various bend ranges that you can set up of a different amount versus uh, up and down. So maybe my program is set for just uh, two semitones bend, but I could actually say that I want an octave shift up, maybe for both zones, or maybe just one zone. So there's no shift at all in the bend range for the, for the, zone, uh, for the zone one, but maybe a, an octave bend range now. So now I can hold my piano and I can actually use the, the, you know, uh, uh, the wheel to change independently. So I've used these special MIDI parameters um, and I like that. So let's leave that with our layered setups. On the bend parameter, you can assign separate bend ranges up and down for each zone independently. So here I might say channel one has no bend range and channel two here is going to have an octave bend range. And I can set that uh, as, as, as that, as follows. So now we have channel program, key vel, pan, velocity, pan and volume, and we have the bend range set. Let's look at the more buttons. Now we have a series of uh, controller destinations. First is the wheels. I'm going to teach you this set of parameters once, and then you'll know the next uh, six. I think eight, the next 16 soft buttons are actually uh, uh, programmed in a similar way. So this is very, very simple. The question is, what is the, uh, the mod wheel, what is the destination of the mod wheel going to be? Uh, the mod wheel is usually set to uh, the, MIDI, the MIDI controller number for mod wheel, uh, which is uh, MIDI control number one. We can set this to anything we want to. This is called the MIDI destination list. This is where we, we say what, what MIDI message is going to be sent from this physical controller. This is the heart of setup mode, where we, each individual zone has a complete separate mapping from, for every physical controller. So the destination is mod wheel, but I might actually want, I might want the, the mod wheel to be a system. Why don't I say that's a sustain pedal for this pad sound? I can say the mod wheel is now 64 sustain. So here, I can hold something here. And there we go. Here's my pad behind. And all of a sudden, the pad is. I've turned a sustain pedal on with the wheel. Right, so we can, you can see the possibilities for mapping are, are, are uh, drastic here. I also have a pedal for sustain, but I also have you know, a wheel for sustain, an independent per, per uh, unit. I can have this send uh, a, a number of different uh, uh, functions. Uh, entire, all MIDI controllers are set. I can also scale it. If it's a, let's, let's see. Let's, we did a program yesterday in the program editor. 
that was very nice. Uh, let's go back to the default setup. And let's assign that program that we made yesterday, which had a nice thing on the mod wheel. It was called LFO. I believe that's right. And if we tell the wheel to send mod wheel data, there we go. That's a drastic control that we set up with the vast programming on pitch control. And it's controlled by the mod wheel. Now, I want to show you the next parameters. I've already mapped this wheel to be that destination. Why don't I want to use a slider for that? I'll say that slider A is that. So let's go to the next page, sliders. And I see I have the same set of parameters. So let's assign slider A to have the destination of mod wheel. Now I've assigned a slider to be this mod wheel. But maybe I don't want full scaling. Maybe I want when I throw the thing all the way up to just be half scaling. So I'll say 50% scaling. And now I have a finer control that doesn't go all the way, so I've governed it. So I can, I can not only assign it to anything I want to, but I can scale it however I want, even negative. What if it's negative 200%? <laughs> it's not going to do anything because it's always going to go backwards. So why not if I scale it negative 100%, and now the mod wheel is already down, and so it can't go down any further. So now I use the next parameter, add. Since I've scaled it backwards, I want to add an offset. So here I'm going to add the, a MIDI value of 126 to everything. So it's going to now operate in a backwards way. I've turned it, I've added everything all the way up, and the scaling is backwards. So now when the, when the slider is up, there's no modulation. And as I pull it down, it's like throwing the mod wheel up. I can change the curve of this as well, and this is uh, very useful if I'm using it uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a volume controller, and why don't we do that, actually. There's a MIDI destination for volume, number 7. I'll turn my scaling back up to 100%, and I'll have no offset, and we'll, expand, we'll look at the different kind of curves that are there. Here it is. First I have to, here's, let's see, 100% uh, scaling. My volume is down, so I'm not going to hear any sound and I can bring it up. That's a linear curve, a compressed curve. Better for fade-ins. And then there's, of course, one that's called um, expand. And that throws a different from the end. So when you're, when you're combining different zones and using these different curves, then uh, that's a nice way to do it. You also have an entry and exit value, because if I have something that's going to do something drastic, like fade out a sound at the end, I might want to make sure that when I start this program, when I start this setup, that there is a, uh, a sound to begin with, and that's called an entry value. Entry values are very important because they allow you to specify exactly what kinds of controller messages are going to get sent when you select the setup so that it sounds just like you want it to, ready to move those controllers to change it how you want when you assign them. So, so far we've seen that you can look at a zone and you can change its program. You have a key and velocity uh, settings for the zone. You have a pan and volume entry and exit values. Uh, we can set the bend range and then we can map the various wheels and sliders and even the control pedals uh, for their inputs to any any MIDI destination that we want. We can also, the pressure strip acts just like any other MIDI controller. It can send volume message if you want. So all of a sudden I have this sound here and uh, uh, maybe I want the pr pressure to send MIDI volume. So now all of a sudden I've turned this thing, MIDI volume is now being sent by pressure. So maybe I want to enter a zone you know, when I, when I press, and you can do it that way. Uh, you can start to get an idea of the flexibility uh, that's, that's, that's possible here.